Good evening friends. Today I would like to introduce philosophy. But my introduction to philosophy is on a wider scale with a wider background. You see what is philosophy? Philosophy is culmination of a tradition of thought. And that thought is not only a mental thought but that is, thought is also something which is generated out of thinking and also out of action, the physical action. So it really creates uh, a format of culture. And that culture is a, again a culmination of a tradition. So there is always a long tradition of our living. And that log uh, tradition of living that has got uh, different forms, that has got different formats, that has got different frames. Culture is one of them. Why do I say culture? Because the term very culture means that something is improvised, something is improved, something is cultured. So when the human thinking, human thought, either in uh, on intellectual level or on physical level, that is in the case of movement, it is when it is refined, when it becomes uh, when it becomes presentable, when it becomes uh, communicable, then uh, it is the frame of culture which captures it and which depicts it. Now, philosophy is to be located in a culture. Why? Because any philosophy, any philosophical doctrine, any philosophical con concept is a culmination of that particular culture. In that culture, there is not only one man. There are many men. Although, when one speaks, when one acts, he is the one man. But whatever that one man gets, he gets many things. I mean, there are different resources for him to get the, or collect the data for his thinking. And that data is coming from different kinds of people, different kinds of traditions, different kinds of frames also. So he is a culmination of the entire uh, format to which he belongs to, that is to the culture he belongs to. The major part of this culture is that history. Everything has its history. Everything emerges, everything continues and everything gets degenerated and finally it dies. There is death. As far as the thinking process is concerned, as far as the thoughts are concerned, Say for example, I shall state uh, before you one particular thought. That thought is formulation of my thinking. But is it totally novel to you? Is it totally novel to me? Not necessarily it is totally novel to me or to you. That thought is a culmination of a long process long intellectual process, long mental process, a process which is taking place on the consciousness level, on the awareness level. <laughs> and here that uh, thought gets a form and that, uh, th uh, that uh, thought which, which has got the form, that is my thought and that I am presenting before you. So this is how finally the process of communication begins. You see, process of communication according to me is nothing else but expressing the thought in such a way that they would reach the receiver and receiver will get the same thought or at least the similar thought and come, enter into the thought process which I am having. So this is what communication is. So, I am inviting you. After my invitation, I am bringing you. After my bringing you, I am motivating you to think on the lines on which I am thinking. I am sharing my thoughts with you people. 
I am sharing my thoughts with you people because you, I am making you to understand those thoughts. Understand those thoughts means to adapt those thoughts to your thinking. Need not you adapt for your action, for your behavior, for your life. But at least for your understanding you can adapt them. And that is what is understanding of my speech to you. That is what communication is. Now I said that I am going to introduce to you philosophy. And my introducing to you philosophy is really uh, introducing to you the uh, background from which this philosophy or that is philosophical thinking, philosophical process emerges. And for that the major uh, point for the beginning is the culture. What does a culture do? A culture is refining whatever is given. Now whatever is given to me, what is it which is given to me? My experience is given to me. And whatever experience I, uh, is given to me, I develop it. How do I develop it? First, I articulate it. Then, I organize it. And after articulating, after organizing, I uh, bring it in a form which I can be uh, sending to you. And sending to you means that which I am making that kind of form which is tangible, which is understandable to you. So that is what I am doing. And this I am doing is not in a uh, on a basic level. That is on a rude level or in a raw level or in a raw form. It is cultured. It is decorated. It is cultured. It is decorated. That is, uh, there is an enrichment. So, there is also a frame. There is also a point. There is also a part of enrichment. And this all... Uh, presupposes that there is a creation. In fact, communication itself is a process of creation. And in philosophical thinking, in the process of philosophizing, doing philosophy is a creative activity. So that creative activity we are going to try to understand. And what is the context in which the context is of Indian philosophy? Although I will be coming a little later to talk directly about the Indian philosophical tradition, I would like to specify and clarify some of the basic concepts just now as I mentioned before you, culture. So let me begin with the culture. But what is culture? As I said that culture is a kind of culmination. Culmination of what? Culmination of a tradition. Tradition means that is uh, in the span of time, in the span of period, there are several developments. The several developments are passing through several states and then the tradition is built. There are relations. Those relations may not be always vivid. But we have to understand those relations and if we understand those relations of the happenings, of the thinking, of the thoughts, then we can understand the thought and philosophy in a better way or rather in a proper way or in a true sense of the understanding. So this tradition, what is this tradition? This tradition is the tradition of the human world or human group to which we belong to. And this tradition of the human group, there is some origin. Where is the origin? We are not able to point out. But we take for granted that we begin here. So, let us begin with a particular point and from that point let us draw a line and then follow that line that is we are understanding, we are developing the tradition. So, after origin what comes there is the continuation. So, whatever is the basic form of the thought or whatever is the basic thought that is continued. 
and this continuation is nothing else but a growth also a development and also manifestation on different levels so this is how tradition is strengthening the growth and strengthening the growth and also is uh, giving meaning it's giving sense it's specifying significance of the thought why because the thought is something which is to be placed into a wider frame what is that wider frame that wider frame is nothing else but our life the stream of life the flow of life and in that stream of life in that flow of life what we place what we get and whatever we get we place it and when we place it then the many thoughts are being placed those thoughts they have got a connection and that connection from first part to another part to third part to third fourth part this is how it continues that continuation is there and in order to understand that continuation we have to <coughs> see the growth and <coughs> to begin with seeing the growth is pointing out the history how from one the two has emerged how from two we come to three this is how uh, the growth is there this is how the growth is of the thoughts is also there you see one thought growth this is one aspect another aspect is that after one thought goes it is followed by another thought that also grows and then there is a continuity as in the growth of one thought there is continuity amongst the multiple thoughts which are emerging serially there is also a continuity and to detect that continuity to trace back that continuity is try to understand the history so we have to understand the history of thoughts whatever are emerging now those thoughts they get accumulated and those accumulated thoughts that is the data now that is not just the empirical data because whatever we are talking about is on the intellectual level that is in abstraction on a formal level or in terms of forms so whatever we are uh, accumulating is not just the sense data but although we are using the term data for that that is something some material abstract material some formal material is accumulated and that accumulation is not at random accumulation that accumulation has got its own structure its own order its own organization so organization is an important point here after articulation what we come to uh, um, the point that is the organization of the thoughts and those thoughts are getting organized now there are different kinds of faculties of human mind there are different kinds of aspects of the reality or let us say the empirical world so in every aspect there are different levels also so simultaneously we are following the um, levels as well as we are following the aspects as well as we are following the continuity between them and that is a complex structure and in that complex structure we get some forms which are systematized forms so this uh, accumulation done in this way gives us the first thing which it gives us is a science i am following a particular line of thinking so in my particular line of thinking the next station is station of science now along with science there are other stations also 
there before science also there are some stations now my train takes how many stations my train can take 10 stations between first and where i have arrived or it can take only two st stations that is there before science there is another station which is a very important station but on which I am not going to concentrate for several reasons. Those reasons will be explained in the due course of my discussions with you. And what is that station? The station which comes earlier to science is the station which is called by us as religion. You see, the science is something which is based on rational activities. And religion is not purely based on rational activities always. There are beliefs, there are faiths, there are mental sentiments and so many other things which do not come under the strict purview of reason and rationality. But they are there. So before our reason is awakened or before our reason is uh, uh, activated for its own peculiar actions and functions, there is also on the intellectual level, here by intellectual level I mean the inner capacities of man not the physical capacities, non-physical capacities of the man, when they are activated, then we get again some forms, we get some ideas, we get some thoughts. And those are the thoughts uh, which give us religion. And next station from religion is science. And then from science, what do we get in science? What does science enable us? Science enables us or rather science gives us the principles. Whatever matter under consideration is treated scientifically or whatever scientific approach enables us to do is to find out the principles. So science is understood in this way and those principles. Now from science we come to principles which is an abstract level, much more abstract than science. Science is much more abstract than religion. And from this principal level, which is abstract, we come to still further station and that is our final station, where we are going to leave our train and enter into the city. What is the city? The city is city of philosophy. That is our final station. What is there in this city? What is there in this station? In this station, there are forms of thoughts. There are thoughts in a formal abstract level and there are forms of thought. Both these things are together, mingled with each other, are found in philosophy. And this is how we get philosophy. And this philosophy that is which is a uh, result of or culmination of principles is really speaking the base, the basic or even you can use the term fulcrum for our thinking. And our thinking is again A part of our life is a form of our life. And so philo what philosophy gives us, philosophy gives us a base, a base structure of our life. And now when we say that it gives us a <coughs> basic structure of our life, then what are the directions in which the life comes in? So that also we have to consider and in order to consider that we have to have a now wider perspective. 
Let me come back from philosophy, come back to previous station, the previous station of science. Now here, when I say I am coming to the previous station of uh, station of science uh, on a formal level or on an abstract level, then here I understand science as a uh, an arrangement of various doctrines, various concepts, and various principles in a particular format, to which the Greek word logi is used sociology, psychology, anthropology, here the term logic comes and when we come to see this term logic, immediately we are reminded of Aristotle. He has introduced this particular. Now what is this logic? For Aristotle and for us also, not exactly for us, but it's developed form for us, but logic basically means a structure. What kind of structure? A structure which is sound as far as its consistency is concerned, as far as its content is concerned. So that logic, that is, it gives a form. So psychology is giving a structure of the form of psyche. That is what it is logic. So it is in this sense also we use science. So this is the sense of science. And from that science, that is from that logic, we come to philosophy. What does that logic do? What does that science do? And that science, it is science of what? It is science of actions. It is concerned because actions is the major part of human life the um, process of human living. It is also logic or science of facts which are there and it is also the science of ideas. So facts are there. Our interactive nature, interacting with those facts that gives us actions and behind that there are some ideas. Whenever I look at any object, Whenever I think of acting upon that object, my first way to act upon the object is to respond to that object. So here is the beginning of action. So this action is a very important component. This face is another important uh, component and these two components are based on ideas. I have got some idea. And that idea makes me to take the object, material object or non-material object as an object under consideration or object for consideration. That is what an idea is. So idea is something a more abstract, more um, uh, formal form of consciousness. Now consciousness does it have any particular form? It does not have any particular form. But it is something which is there. We know about it, but we do not know particularities of it. Though we know its functions, though we know its operations, we do not know any particular, but whatever functions, whatever operations we know of the consciousness, they are in a particular context. That is, they belong to a particular form, particular structure. And idea is something which is inarticulate form of consciousness. And that inarticulate form of consciousness every human being has. I should say every living being has, but I, I am not going to say this because I do not know other uh, living beings other than human beings. I don't have that knowledge. So I say at least human being as a living being, living organic being has got this particular capacity, this particular and this particular capacity, I would say that it is a kind of ingredient, a necessary ingredient of man being man. 
और ह्यूमन बीइंग ह्यूमन टर्म कॉन्शियसनेस एंड कॉन्सेप्ट बिहाइंड द टर्म कॉन्शियसनेस से देर इज लाइफ Animate and inanimate. This is the distinction we make. Vedantis do not have that distinction. You are sitting on a chair. Does it have consciousness? For you, it doesn't have consciousness. But for me, it has got consciousness. In a raw language, you have mind. Similarly, the chair on which you are sitting also has a mind. Okay. now if uh, there are insects or if there are animal say there is a cat there is a dog does he have consciousness he has consciousness but the way in which we can analyze and utilize the human consciousness in that way in that sense we are not able to analyze and utilize up to a certain extent i mean i have given deliberately the example of cat and dog because they are pet animals so when an animal becomes a pet animal he gets by transference some traits of human beings but say for example uh, elephants elephants are supposed to be most advanced creatures among the or say tiger so between tiger and elephant there is a big range but tiger has his consciousness elephant also has his consciousness but the area in which tiger's consciousness operates and the area in which elephant's consciousness operates they are not the same maybe elephant's consciousness area is much wider than tiger's because the aim a tiger has and the aim an elephant has got there is a difference and similarly uh, the aim of human being is different we can say that it is uh, advanced or more elevated or superior the term superior is not a good term but unless i use this term you may not understand what i am trying to suggest i am suggesting something whenever i speak i am not only saying something i am also suggesting lot many things so this is how we can say this is what is about the um, animals what about the birds birds also they have got their consciousness and we see that their consciousness is perfect the consciousness of uh, those animals like tiger elephant cat and dog that is also perfect that is perfect because they are consistent and fit into the context in which they are placed into the frame in which they live which is not the case for human beings then what is the case for human beings the case for human beings is that the frame that the structure in which their consciousness is fixed they can go beyond it and by beyond going beyond it they can observe their own structure by being away from themselves so that is the difference and that is what is also the explanation of the difference between consciousness and self consciousness and this term is very well discussed and very well uh, uh, defined in indian tradition about which i am not going to say anything there will be an occasion at the time i am going to explain that but this is what is the case of this consciousness and this consciousness i mean consciousness is life this is one of the statements a popular statement but for me it is not a popular statement for me it is a basic principle of thinking process so whatever happens you see the you are moving is your chair moving 
your chair is not moving. So is there happening with the chair? We say no. But I say yes, there is happening. That chair has come into existence. It is there. It is in front of me. And I can handle that chair. That is also the happening. So whatever is there in the world, the world which we experience, the world which we sense and the world we imagine, that is also there. Is the function of operation function or operation of imagination available with the other living beings that I don't know. But it is certainly available with human beings. So that is there. But yes, there, there should be some kind of uh, imagination in the chairs, in the stones, in the mountains and in the water water which is flowing through the rivers, water which is falling uh, in the form of rains from the skies. So it must be there. So it, everything has got consciousness, but the levels and formations of consciousness differ from one instance to another instance, from one context to another context, from one state to another state, from one aspect to another aspect. So that is how uh, it is a kind of complicated kind of thing. Now I was talking about the ideas. So ideas is the peculiarity and I can say with confidence that this peculiarity belongs to human beings. I cannot say so um, confidently with the beings, living beings other than human beings. That is my statement. What do, what do these ideas do? These ideas enable us the constructing of whatever parts are available to us. That is the data. Either it may be material data or that is physical data or it may be social data. It may be a, any other type of data. But whatever data we get that data is constructed, constructed when we use the term constructed, we come to structure. So, idea is responsible for giving a structure through its operation of construction. And that structure is the most important point for the process of thinking because thought is nothing else but a kind of construction. And this is something which is human creation. What is idea? Idea is a human creation. And for Vedantins, especially the Advaita Vedantins, and uh, applicable to all talk, uh, types of Vedant, Vedantins, even the um, whatever is called as physical material objects, they are also having their own designs. They are also having their own structures. But their point of view is slightly different uh, from the western distinction between matter and consciousness, mind and body. So they don't have that kind of a distinction or they don't have that kind of approach which enables this distinction to be possible and use that. Now, when we come to actions, then what are actions? Actions are performances. Using a little more difficult technical term is actions are nothing else but rituals. When I say rituals, ritual means that there is a particular form but that particular form although has a particular aim, although has a particular goal to achieve, it need not be there. A ritual is ritual. I can say this is a ritual. It need not have any aim. It need not have any goal to be achieved. Though out of that goal, out of that aim, it gets formulated. So it becomes a ritual. Now you are moving your head. Is it a ritual? It is not a ritual. But I say that when you will um, greet somebody, and you will move your head in this way, in this direction, in this proportion, then it becomes a ritual. 
So that is what a ritual is. And why? You ask me the question why? You will, I am sure you will not ask me the question why? Because you know the meaning behind it. But if there is somebody else who does not know the meaning, it is a meaningless ritual. So whatever action forms are created and constructed, they are in the form of rituals. But the term ritual has got a derogatory meaning in the uh, present culture, in the present tradition, in the present times because the meaning part of it is neglected, is ignored. But a, an abstract form of performances that I call as ritual. And these rituals, ritual means that now you are articulated a particular mood of action. How you are articulated? Giving them a specific form. And they have they carry norms. They are according to the norms. Once I say that they have got some aim or they have got some end, it means they are coming from some direction which is outside to them. The center of the direction, the originating center of the direction is not from within, it is from external. So, it is called as norm. So there are those norms and those norms are determining or those norms are enabling the rituals, not just the actions. So, so when we just say about uh, a particular action which is to be examined, then it is not just an action. It is a kind of ritual and those rituals that is and the rituals uh, when rituals are accumulated in a particular span of life then it becomes behavior. So what is a behavior? Behavior is a cluster of various action forms and that behavior is guided by norms. Then I ask. Okay, good. You said rituals, to my understanding, ritual is celebration. Is it connected? No, 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 ritual okay. is not celebration. Okay. Ritual is not celebration. Your sir, question? Sir, how you connected like from actions to uh, continued action and then ritual to mm -hmm. more behavior. Yes. So, as you said that the form is outside and from that the ritual is coming. From outside the person. Yes, 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 yes. Uh, uh, sorry, out, not outside the person, outside the action. Outside the action. Okay, so rich, the goal of that ritual is totally outside that action and that inspires that action and then it becomes a ritual. So, as you had also uh, distinguished between the Indian tradition of understanding of consciousness and Western, the so same way now the scientific tradition more modern people which claim to be objective, rational. Yes. When they say that these rituals, when the goal of this ritual is something supernatural or which it can't achieve, simply like if we take for example that you know, expecting rain after performing certain rituals, expecting a particular kind of offspring after performing certain rituals. So how do we approach these kinds of rituals which have a goal which doesn't seem to be causally connected to the practice and the effect of that? You see, uh, the term causally, thankful for using this term. That enables me to cut down my lot of explanations. The causation, the idea of causation is specifically a scientific outlook, a scientific approach. And you are aware of uh, Buddhism, Buddhist philosophy. What does Buddhist philosophy say about causation? There is nothing like causation. A total denial of causation is there. Now, this causation, whatever you are talking about, whatever you can look at objectively, that you accept as causation. But does it mean that something beyond your capacities has no existence? You cannot say so. Saying so is unscientific. 
So there is certainly a causation. If you go into the deeper scriptures, say for example, you have given a good example, two examples, one on cosmic level, another on human level. They have their metaphysics. I mean, Indian tradition has got its metaphysics to give the causal explanation of these things. But the Western tradition doesn't have that metaphysics. So, they, they, they cannot uh, think of that there will be any explanation, causal explanation. They cannot think that is beyond the limit of their understanding. That is beyond the limits of their cognition and thinking. So, that difference one has to make. Satisfied or anything more? Clarification? Those are not... Uh... Clarification is not there, but still not so satisfying the answer in the sense that if we can't objectively locate, because this is the problem usually that comes. You see, when I say objectively locate, it means that experimentally it must be provable. Hmm. Objectively locate means that away from me. But what I am saying in the context of science that it must be empirically verifiable. Hmm. So, is it empirically verifiable? For Westerners, it is not empirically verifiable. But for Easterners, it could be verifiable. And for that, <coughs> you say, when the new birth, a child is born, there are some rituals. And uh, after the life, maybe 90 years, 100 years or 120 years, that born baby dies. And after death also there are rituals. And after death, some years the rituals go on. Is there any uh, scientific reason for that? There is some metaphysical reason. It is a different matter whether you accept that metaphysics or you don't accept that metaphysics. Largely or many times our acceptance of anything is based on our capacities to grasp it. If your mentality, that is if your mental setup is not tuned to receive that way, then you say I don't accept that. But when it gets tuned, then you say oh now I accept that. What do you accept? You accept the metaphysical connections. Or rather you accept the metaphysics. First you have to accept that there it has got some metaphysical base. And then if it has got metaphysical base, then the metaphysical relations, etc, etc, that will come into that. And here they have got their own metaphysics. And now you see every metaphysics is not empirically provable into a laboratory. The limitations of science are that whatever they accept is empirically verifiable in a laboratory. And what kind of laboratory? Again, it is not a mental laboratory. It is a physical laboratory. That is their limitation. Who says that it is their limitation? Those who are outside the uh, 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 science, orbit of science, they say it is. Do scientists say? Scientists don't say that. Then the, those who are outside that orbit, what they will say? Okay, we don't use this language. We use another language which will be more palatable for uh, scientists that there are more possibilities. Do scientists deny possible world? They don't deny. Although possible world, they have not located, analyzed in any of the physical laboratory lab. They are ready to accept that possibilities. Why? Because this particular concept, which is possibility is an idea, isn't it? Idea is the capacity, ingredient capacity, inherent capacity of human thinking, of human being. Whether other than human beings, other uh, beings do they have, that I don't know. 
<laughs> Again, I come back to that uh, as far as explanation, as far as for justification. So that is also there. Shall I go ahead? So I think it's good for 45 minutes exactly in 45 you said. <laughs> Thank you.